on. I gotta go quick, so. Hello, my name is Chase Burchett. I was raised in the typical American Christian home, when when I was only 13 years old, I was falsely converted after I was presented with a false gospel that is commonly referred to as easy believism. I did not trust in Christ, nor did I obey his commands. As I went through middle school, high school, my lifestyle was marked with covetousness and sexual immorality. In some ways, I was even a modern day Pharisee. I thought that I was righteous because I was not involved in drug use or underage drinking, but I failed to see the gross wickedness of my filthy speech, my sexual morality and worship of material things, and my overwhelming pride. Certainly, I would have never said verbally, yes, I worship my car and I spit in the face of Almighty God, but that was because I was dead in my transgressions and sins and completely blind to my sin. Sin is always deceptive. You wouldn't need to hear any words from my mouth to know that I was idolizing possessions. You'd only have to look at my computer history, receipts, and what occupied my mind the most. Whatever it is that you think about most and you desire them the most in your life, that is your God. God bestowed His grace upon me while I was going through my freshman year at UCF. I had jumped into my sin wholeheartedly and I was overwhelmingly empty inside. Christ sought after me by sending one of His servants to share His testimony with me and to get me to watch a video on YouTube, Paul Washer's shocking youth message. Yeah. It was a late Saturday night in April of 2010 when God finally awakened me to the reality of my life, that I was wicked sinful, unrepentant, hell-deserving, I was covetous, idolatrous, and I was a son of Adam, and I was wasting my life on nothing more than paper, fiberglass, and metal. I realized that every breath I had ever taken, I had used to advance the kingdom of Chase. I had not taken up my cross and followed after Christ. I woke up the next Sunday morning after listening to the sermon, and I was unable to think about anything besides the glaring fact that I had lived 18 years of futility and attempt to please myself. One minute. <laughs> I screamed, <laughs> I would not have this man to rule over me, but by noon the next day, God had already changed my heart. I was sobbing uncontrollably at a yacht club in Sarasota because as I looked around at all of the objects I once worshipped, I knew that they were as useless as the wooden idols of the Old Testament, and the men who gave their lives for those possessions would soon be in hell forever. I returned to Orlando that evening, and I couldn't hold back God's word and his truth that were burning in my bones like fire. I tried to talk to my roommates about Christ and hell, and they did not take me seriously. I tried to explain the gospel to pretty much everyone I spoke to, not because I went to a church where everyone else did so, but because Jesus Christ has shed his blood for my soul. Amen. Many people go to churches like Cornerstone and get heavily involved, but fail to realize that they can be saved not by flexing their spiritual muscles and denying their sin, but in, in going witnessing and such things, but rather because Jesus Christ has died on that tree upholding, bearing the wrath of Almighty God. God counts your faith in Christ as your righteousness because He bore the wrath in the place of men like me. Here is what it means to savingly trust in Christ. When you die and you stand before God, and you will say, Lord God, please let me into your heaven, not because of what I have done, but because of what Jesus has done for me. If God were to reply to you, the blood of Christ is not enough, then you would simply say, then I will go to hell then, because I refuse to trust in anything besides the death and resurrection of Christ.